it was almost as if a switch went off. If he was allowed to keep going, people would have started dying. Nexium went after a lot of actors. You're literally branding people like cattle. What? Don't underestimate a narcissist. These white men be scary. Are you ready to talk about Nixie? I'm ready, baby. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Merle. Hi, I'm Joyce. And we're two friends who are interested in knowing what makes cults appealing to people. Welcome to Rise and Fall, where in each episode, we investigate a different cult to see if and when we would have joined. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Nexium. The founders describe it as a self-help organization that helps people experience joy in their lives. Others would describe it as a multi-level marketing scheme, a cult, and a sex trafficking operation that literally branded women. We established in the first episode on the People's Temple that I tend to be a little too trusting at times. And I'm someone who's a little bit more hesitant. Stranger danger, girl. But like Merle, I do love community and a sense of feeling connected. So we have our paddles here to gut check when we'd be cool with something that's happening in Nexium or when we would nope the hell out. It all started in 1998, when Keith Ranieri, a former participant in various multi-level marketing schemes, aka MLMs, including Amway, joined up with Nancy Salzman, a nurse, a self-professed hypnotist, and student of neurolinguistics. So far, I'm not gonna lie to you, I am skeptical about hypnotism. So I'm actually gonna say, yep. I'm intrigued, I'm cool with it because I actually have been hypnotized. I got past life regression therapy where I saw my old life in Ireland and I saw some of my future lives. Like I'm gonna be a very sexy man and I'm gonna do a lot of sexy things. Together, Ranieri and Saltzman launched Nexium as a self-help organization in Albany, New York. Following Nexium's founding, Ranieri and Saltzman began offering various workshops such as executive success programs, aka ESP, from the company's inception all the way to its rapid downfall in the late 2010s. An estimated 18,000 people enrolled in Nexium's workshops. Even though Nexium started as an upstate New York thing, there were apparently also a lot of well-known Hollywood people in this group. From Dynasty star Linda Evans to India Oxenberg, the daughter of another Dynasty actress, Katherine Oxenberg, Seagram's liquor heir, Edgar Brofman, as well as his daughters, Claire and Sarah Brofman. Even Richard Branson, allegedly, though he has denied taking courses. And that's just to name a few. I will say that it's easy to be influenced with Beyonce's new album. She had like four boxes. I bought a box immediately. I had a big old crush on Ian Somerhalder of the Vampire Diaries. Of course you did. He started like this IFS fund, something to help the environment and animals, and I was like, you're up, sign me up. All right, speaking about Hollywood, we're gonna get more insight from an expert. Let's go. Let's go. While we're traveling to our next location, why don't we talk a little bit more about the secrecy within Nexium? Those who took courses were actually asked to sign NDAs, or non-disclosure agreements. Sources say the organization used a technique called rational inquiry to facilitate personal and professional development. They were allegedly so secretive and protective over their techniques and teachings that in 2003, Nexium sued an organization called the Ross Institute for publishing excerpts of its manual in three critical articles. The group posted a psychiatrist's assessment of Nexium's secret manual on its website that called the program expensive brainwashing. It definitely feels like a no for me. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't want to be brainwashed. <laughs> we have signed so many NDAs, you and I. I know. Sometimes I don't even remember what the NDA is for, know. and then I still talk my junk, and then I'm like, oh, I could possibly get too for talking my junk. I need to be quiet. Actress Kristen Crook joined Nexium in 2006, and soon after, Salzman and her daughter Lauren went to Vancouver to recruit Crook's Smallville co-star Allison Mack. After Mack joined, she and Lauren Salzman 
responded intensely, and the two women eventually were a part of Ranieri's inner circle and even became his sexual partners. And although Krug eventually left Nexium, Mac became a big time advocate for the group, according to sources, and eventually became a high ranking member. Mac was also co creator of The Source, which was a Nexium program that recruited actors. Mac was second in command after Ranieri of the secret Nexium group DOS, which stands for Dominus Obsequious Sororium. It roughly translates to Lord Master of the Obedient Female Companions. I think we know where this one's headed. What? what? <laughs> Obedient what? Lord Master Obedium. Here's where my little feminism comes out. Let's hear it. Why do I gotta be obedient? There is no way in mother hell I am calling no man my mother master. And you gonna have to bleep me on that. Well, the crazy thing is that they kind of created this group to sort of help to like supposedly empower women. But realistically, they were creating these toxic relationships between women. Criticism of the group escalated in 2014, when Kristen Keefe, longtime partner of Ranieri and mother of his child, left the group and called Ranieri dangerous. I'm Dr. Natalie Feinblatt. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist in Los Angeles, California. Hey, Hi, Merlin Hi. Joyce. Come on in, let's talk cults. Please take a seat. When it comes to Nexium, when do you believe it really reached the point of no return? I would say that Nexium kind of crossed the point of no return when things went kind of full on sexual abuse. He had always had this kind of harem of women around him in his personal life. Ranieri's former partner also recalled this story. When Keith was 13 years old, dozens of young girls were calling the house. And his mother was overhearing his conversations with them where he was telling every single girl the same thing. I love you. You're the special one. You're important. You are the only one in my life and I love you. I mean, that's sick. Like that's a lot of work. Something like this happened with a boy I liked and he was telling me all these things, telling mm -hmm. me how special, funny I was. Mm -hmm. He was talking to my cousin. <gasps> I mean, was Ranieri just a ego-driven boy in the making? It tracks to me. He went from like, that's not enough, now I want sexual power over even more women, and that's where all of the DOS stuff started. By 2017, the group could not hide from widespread negative coverage of its practices. That year, reports by investigative journalist Frank Parlato and a separate New York Times piece unearthed details about DOS. According to the reports, female DOS members were called slaves, branded with Ranieri and Max initials, subjected to corporal punishment from their masters, and required to offer nude photos or other potentially damaging information about themselves as collateral. Law enforcement commentators said the subgroup was forcing members into sexual slavery with high-ranking members. Every cult involves coercive control, which is a system of manipulating people to do things that are against their best interests and in the interests of the person or persons running the group, to keep them you know, in the group, isolated, doing whatever it is the leadership wants them to be doing. The level of psychological control and emotional control and physical control and sexual control is just, it's completely and utterly disgusting. During Allison Mack's trial, it was revealed that ex-member India Oxenberg wrote in her book that master Allison Mack allegedly required Oxenberg to eat only around 500 calories daily so she could lose weight and was required to ask permission before consuming those calories. After leaving Nexium, Oxenberg understood that this was a way for Ranieri's victims to obtain more childlike bodies. With Keith, it's like easy, because we're like, this guy sucks. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, with Allison Mack, it's like, she's a Hollywood actress, and now she's a part of this thing, maybe because she feels special and she feels like she can enact this power. So women were being abused in Nexium kind of in one of two ways. The women that were apparently not who Keith Ranieri was sexually attracted to, they were the ones who were at the very least involved in kind of the psychological or self-help areas in terms of being subjected to endless seminars and courses and having to do these pseudo counseling sessions called EMs, which were really just about getting people to believe what he wanted them to believe. And then unfortunately for the ones that he was attracted to, they were eventually also incorporated into DOS, supposedly all about like discipline and reaching your goals, but was really just about 
like a non-consensual domination submission relationship with Keith Ranieri. Canadian actress Sarah Edmondson, who had participated in ESP courses since 2005, left Nexium after Mac inducted her into DOS. Edmondson claimed that participants were blindfolded naked, held down by Mac and three other women, and branded by Nexium affiliated doctors using a cauterizing pen. According to the Times, hundreds of members left Nexium after Edmondson went public. I'm honestly kind of at a loss for words. These women were being told that they were getting tattoos. And then you have someone strapping you down naked with a bunch of women standing around you telling you they love you while you're screaming in agony. When you take a step back, essentially what he wanted was a polyamorous relationship with a bunch of women that had like a BDSM aspect to it, right? Domination and submission. I am a sex positive therapist. Clients that come to me that are interested in BDSM, I'm not gonna pathologize that. Polyamorous relationships, I don't pathologize that. The difference in Nexium was the lack of consent, which is what I suspect got him off or that he was interested in. You've taken the classes, you've worked hard, and then you're entered into this special chapter that seems like you will grow immensely. And the moment that you step into it and you're ready to fulfill this level of growth that you've been looking for, you're held down. You're literally branding people like cattle. Mm -hmm. Like what does that do to your mind and your self-esteem? Mm -hmm. And they didn't know that they were being branded with Keith Raniere and Allison Mack's initials. They thought it was like supposed to stand for the elements. How sick that these people just wanted their initials on these women's bodies. Why is it so difficult to leave cults? It's so difficult to leave cults because most cults employ a means of coercive control that involves isolating people from the outside world and really making them feel like they can't have anybody in their life who's not a part of this group. If a person is in a group like that for long enough, they may end up not knowing anybody outside of their group. You're leaving an entire group of people who in all likelihood are gonna to be told to have nothing to do with you when you leave. And that's honestly like the best case scenario. In some groups, you were employed by somebody who's in the group. So if you leave, there goes your income. They were forcing people to make up blackmail stories yeah. against themselves. Sarah Edmondson made up mm -hmm. a story about her husband abusing her and it wasn't even real mm -hmm. because she was doing it for the greater good to prove her loyalty. Kind of like Jonestown. It's just the same as if you're in a really manipulative, abusive relationship where maybe the person never lays a hand on you, but you come away from the relationship in really bad shape. You know, it involves gaslighting and all sorts of psychological manipulation. That's just the bare minimum <laughs> of what can happen in a cult in terms of trauma. Even having been in an emotionally abusive relationship when I was in college, I just saw the tiptoe baby steps of someone who like would always gaslight me, would always make me feel bad for what I was wearing, would make me feel bad for what I was eating sometimes. I mean, that broke me after we ended it. And when you look at the scope of this, it's just scary just to even think about. So can anyone be a cult leader or a cult member? I would say that anybody could be a cult member. I don't think that just anybody could be a cult leader. Society kind of tells itself a lot of stories still about how people who get into cults are stupid or weak or followers or something like that. But the only common thing that a lot of cult members have about themselves is that they got involved in the cult during a time of transition or loss. And you can also see from certain groups like Nexium that they can attract really powerful or famous people, right? Nexium went after a lot of actors, you know, a lot of people here in LA. The fact that rich women paid for this. Uh-huh. The girls aren't for the girls. What's going on? We need a conference or something. When it comes to a cult leader, I think we're lucky because I think you have to have a specific type of like malignant narcissism to not just engage in like abusive relationships on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but to try and grow that into like a group where you're amassing power, whether it's financial, psychological, sexual. Yeah, it takes a special kind of awful for somebody to cross over into that territory. Keith Raniere was born in 1960 and was considered a gifted child. His father was a New York City ad executive and his mother was a ballroom dancing instructor. Ranieri later admitted that his mother was an alcoholic, but a lot of Ranieri's psychological hangups seemed to hail from him being labeled as special among his peers. I think Everybody, to a certain degree, has a need to feel special. What's twisted here, maybe, is like, he was being told he was special. There's a difference between having your grandmother tell you, you're perfect, and having a full like group of people kind of telling you you're special and you have powers or something, you know? But also, you know what's really interesting is that with Jim Jones, he had no one, and he was not told he was special. And Keith Raniere 
was told by a lot of people it was special. It doesn't have to be the same start to life, right? No, because they both end up still being evil narcissists. Yeah. That's the one thing I don't get about these cult leaders, like, you really think your poom poom pops that severely over other people? Like, we're all special. That's what Barney told me, her. With Keith Ranieri, yeah, he didn't have a big personality, he wasn't super charismatic, but he could make you buy what he was selling. Plus, he also just told a lot of lies about himself. I guess, yeah, if all you ever do is think about yourself, it makes it a lot easier to do terrible things. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Don't underestimate a narcissist. According to Barbara Boucher, Ranieri's former partner, Ranieri's father had said that once his family told the boy how gifted he was, it was almost as if a switch went off. And suddenly, overnight, he turned into, like, Jesus Christ. Boucher said Ranieri's father described the boy as acting superior and better than everyone. Like, he was a deity. It sounds like you're saying like he was a daddy. <laughs> That's all I'm hearing. Daddy, no! Daddy! <laughs> According to Ranieri, he not only could speak in full sentences by the age of one and read by age two, he also became proficient in piano by the time he was 12. Some also say Ranieri claimed to be a judo champion. I feel like he's making that up. Growing up in a Haitian household, I could get all the accolades in the world. When it came to those dishes, I was no one. And I think that's what he needed, you know? Mm -hmm. He needed a Haitian mother mm -hmm. who would get that chancla and bop him on the head <laughs> at any given moment. I mean, if my one-year-old started speaking in full sentences, mother, today has been an intense day, I think I'd give that child an exorcism. It's a demon. <laughs> it has to be. That's so eerie. It's so Ranieri. <laughs> Sorry. What are some of the warning signs with cult behavior like Nexium? I would say any time that a group seems to put a lot of effort into wanting to monopolize your time, wanting to monopolize your energy, wanting to tell you where you're supposed to be, usually with them most of the time, those are big red flags. And also anything where you're kind of accepted to blindly believe in certain ideas or certain people and any sort of questioning, no matter how like dainty or like gentle you're trying to be, is met with extreme resistance, that's a pretty big red flag too. In the final days of 2017, authorities finally began an official criminal investigation of Nixiam. And in just a few months, they had enough evidence to arrest Ranieri, who was hiding out in Mexico at the time. In March 2018, Ranieri was sent to Brooklyn to face charges that he forced women to engage in sexual acts with him. According to an affidavit filed by the FBI, Ranieri had a rotating group of 15 to 20 women who were expected to have sex with him. 15 to 20? 15 to 20 women on his rotation? It started when he was 13, and he continued it to the extremes. 20 in a rotation. And underweight, sick, exhausted women at that. It's just really hard for me because I just cannot fathom. You need that much control over someone. You are a decrepit piece of freaking garbage and I hope that you get a paper cut on every single part of your body for the rest of eternity and the lives after you nasty looking ass I mean, you know, I really don't have much to add to that. That was pretty much sums up my thoughts. So I've been looking into EMDR therapy myself for my own like personal trauma mm -hmm. journey. And I know that that's something you have deployed like for mm -hmm. ex-cult members. Can you kind of explain what EMDR is and how you would use it for an ex-cult member? So EMDR, first of all, it stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. Essentially, it is a type of trauma therapy that employs a very specific technique called bilateral stimulation, which is really just a fancy way of saying anything that crosses the vertical midline of the body, so left, right, left, right. There's a lot of evidence to back up that talking about trauma while doing bilateral stimulation reduces post-traumatic stress symptoms. People who are in groups like Nexium that are kind of psychology or self-help based, therapy itself can be super triggering because it's similar to some of the things that were done in the group. He literally took away the joy from so many basic human needs and human yeah. rights. He took the joy out of sex. He took the joy out of food. He took the promise out of therapy. I have to do a lot of checking in around like, is this, similar in any way to stuff that happened in the group. Things got more interesting when a superseding indictment replaced the original and instead charged Ranieri and five other women linked to Nexium, including Nancy Saltzman and her daughter Lauren, 
Allison Mack, and Seagram's liquor heiress Claire Bronfman, with the following crimes. Racketeering, racketeering conspiracy, identity theft, extortion, forced labor, sex trafficking, money laundering, wire fraud, and obstruction of justice. Sources noted that Bromfman was the only one of these names not linked to the DOS subgroup. Well, well, at least they got in some trouble. So they were just being horrible on all fronts. The line between victim and like whatever it's is so, so blurry. It's you know so what I mean? Blurry. They were the ones leading women to go have sex against their will with Keith Raniere, you know? They yeah. were the ones pulling money out of people and recruiting people. So they are responsible at the end of the day. Within the brain of a cult member, does something change in your brain? Like how, how do people fall into this, I guess? The bad news is that any kind of trauma, including being in a cult, can change your brain. Healing and recovery can change your brain too. We have hiking trails in our brain. A thought is a hiking trail, a behavior is a hiking trail, and just like the hiking trails here in Los Angeles, you've done this thing a million times. It's so easy, even if it's unhealthy, even if it's not great, for you to just go down that path. Whereas choosing like a new healthy behavior is like trying to create a hiking trail where none exists. But the good news is that if you keep doing that, a trail will start to form. And if you stop going down the other one or go down it less, that will start to grow over. So when you're in a cult, like in Nexium, that manipulation can wear a groove in your brain. But once you get out and you stop doing that or you do it less, you can change your brain in that direction too. The human strength to survive mm -hmm. will always overpower evil, hallelujah. <laughs> It's just really interesting, this whole experience of really delving deep into Nexium, even though nothing will ever, ever make up for the pain that those women and the people who are part of the cult went through. I will say that just knowing there was some kind of justice this time gives me a little faith that people are on it, that people care. I just give all my love and respect to the victims, and I really feel for you. I hope you're able to find the help that you need and take your power back in whatever way, shape, or form and just in your own time. I think the one thing I'm learning about doing the course of our series is that women are the backbones to many cults. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, just another toxic white man who's got too big for his britches. I wasn't gonna say it, but... It's the truth. These white men be scary. Natalie said earlier, like, Anybody can be a cult member, but it doesn't have to be a cult. It can also just be a misuse of power. It's okay to make a mistake, and it's okay to move forward. That's a wrap to another episode. Next week, we will be covering the Mason family. <laughs> the <laughs> Mason. Manson. Manson. And we will even be going to visit Spawn Ranch. So, check us out. Get ready. Next week on Rise and Fall. Manson targeted young women. Some people get better. Other people choose to take those situations to make them better at being bad. The girls told me their participation in the murders. They've killed people. They're going to kill me. So we're at Spawn Ranch. This is it. This is the cave. <laughs>